welcome uh, once again to the J.R. O'Neill Botanic Gardens. We are in the Fishlock Hall. I am so pleased to welcome all of you here today. My name, as some of you might know, is Linda Varlak. I'm the acting director with the National Parks Trust of the Virgin Islands. And we are so pleased to be able to hold this press conference this morning to update you, the public, as well as our partners within the community about what's going on with the National Parks Trust. We are again being visited with our partners, long-standing and friends, from the Royal Botanic Gardens Q, uh, in the form of our project partner, Mr. Martin Hamilton, who will be speaking with you shortly. And I would just like to uh, preface this whole uh, press conference with some background about what we have been doing and why we're here. The present project that we are working under, um, which we've received funding from the Darwin Plus uh, Environment and Climate Fund, uh, is basically to build our systems and our capacity to monitor and conserve Virgin Islands flora, plants and vegetation. Uh, we have been doing this for quite some time, uh, working with plants and vegetation. Uh, the Botanic Gardens is our key illustration of that work that we are doing. It's the place where all of our plant work has been taking place. We've been before you before discussing the different um, strides that we've made. We've been able to establish a nursery and a conservation garden which features plants that are distinct, are native, even endemic, to the Virgin Islands, and that is growing, no pun intended. And we are, again, making more strides because in our past projects, we've really focused on the vegetation, being able to map them. This particular project is all about building our capacity. And in terms of capacity, I do mean our staff. We are investing now in our people so that they can invest in the growth and conservation of these plants that we have that are unique to us and are important to us, both uh, environmentally, biologically, culturally in some instances as well. So we as the Trust have enjoyed this long and fruitful collaboration with Q um, over the past few years and you know we've been drawing closer and closer to that overall goal that we do have in mind which was first uh, shared with us by Mr. Joseph Reynold O'Neill um, where we want to help to promote soil conservation and reforestation and to build territory-wide awareness and support of our plant initiatives. So we have this responsibility to manage and we have a small and committed staff but they do need more in the way of training and experience and exposure into how to do it. So this is where we are really thankful to partner with our Q partners as well as then to even welcome into that relationship some new partners um, from within the region who are specifically um, located in Puerto Rico and they're part of this Puerto Rican bank and I'm going to allow um, Mr. Martin Hamilton to introduce them but before that I'd just like to introduce to you one of the faces of the trust that is going to be not just a face, she's a person who is going to be part and parcel of you know, this development, this investment, Ms. Natasha Harrigan. She is a, come Natasha, she is born and bred BV Islander. And she's not just that. What is really great about her, hi, <laughs> Ms. Natasha Harrigan. She is our uh, terrestrial warden and we are actually looking forward to grooming her towards becoming the curator for the Botanic Gardens in time to come. Um, Natasha is very passionate, she's very capable, she's undergone her training at the University of the Virgin Islands and she is, she's wowed us from day one with her um, strength. She goes out into places where most uh, persons who have been in the field for long years and are accustomed to the heat and the strenuous terrain and the difficult conditions and she just deals with all of it with this very calm, cool, and collected nature, and she's, she's a lot tougher and stronger than she looks. Um, and we are really certain that 
we are investing in her and it's a secure investment because she is proving to be exactly what she has always promised and we will continue to help her move further and further towards that capability of really helping us to take the botanic gardens and our plant conservation locally to next levels. Um, there are other members of staff, thanks Natasha, uh, there are other members of staff who are also going to be receiving um, this kind of training and this uh, partnering and um, there's a word um, I'm trying to remember where you actually bring somebody alongside. Uh, the word escapes me right now, but uh, they too are also benefiting and uh, to uh, various degrees. So we will look forward to being able to send them away on different types of training, um, most particularly at Q in the first instance. Uh, Natasha has been there last September and she's returning this September coming. And um, also having more interactions with our Puerto Rican partners in uh, the University of the Virgin, uh, excuse me, University of Puerto Rico and Mayaguez, thank you. Uh, the DRNA, Departamento de Recursos Naturales y Ambientales, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, um, specifically Caribbean Ecological Service Field Office, and also Parque Doña Ines, Fundación Luis Munoz Marin in Puerto Rico. They will say it a whole lot better than I did, but um, before going on for too much longer, I'd like now to invite our main uh, representative from Q Botanic Gardens, Dr. Martin Hamilton, uh, to come and support this effort by telling you more about the work that they've been doing, the accomplishments, and then to introduce our project partners from Puerto Rico. Thank you. Thanks, Wanda. Thank you very much for coming to hear about our exciting new project. Uh, as Ms. Varlak just uh, mentioned, we've been working uh, on a number of very collaborative projects over the past four years in particular. Uh, in, our, in our long uh, relationship with National Parks Trust, dating back to the late 90s, uh, has really enabled us to strengthen not only the, the knowledge that we have of the flora and the uh, vegetation here in the British Virgin Islands, but also to build very, very good uh, collaborations and strong friendships. Uh, and these are really important parts of conservation. We have to have these collaborations to be able to work together across departments in country and across organizations throughout the region and then internationally. Uh, because no single individual, no single institution is able to do everything themselves. Uh, so the idea uh, coming out of our previous Darwin project where we were mapping the vegetation and beginning to map some of the really threatened plants um, was that we had a, a definite need to bring in more capacity into the Parks Trust specifically, uh, but also to help provide information to partners across the region. And so we began talking very closely with um, the individuals that are here in this room uh, I'll introduce them in just a moment, but I think the key thing here to, to mention is that we are looking at the Puerto Rican bank as an entire unit. There are plants, there are habitats that were here long before humans stepped foot on these islands. Uh, they don't recognize the boundaries between municipalities, they don't recognize state boundaries, they don't recognize international boundaries. But yet many of the, the streams for funding for collaboration are hindered by some of those boundaries. And so what we're trying to do is break down those boundaries to get people talking across them, sharing information, uh, and working toward plant conservation in a regional scale. Uh, so what we've uh, been able to accomplish to date uh, just in the, the last two weeks, as a matter of fact, is, is quite significant. Um, we'll, we'll talk about a few plants that we have here for display, but also some of the species in particular that we've been able to see in the field in the, in the last few days. Um, but before we, we get to the really exciting discoveries, uh, I want to introduce you to the group that are working uh, on this project. Uh, so we'll start off, um, my colleague, uh, Mr. Tom Heller. He works in the UK Overseas Territories with me uh, at Q, 
Uh, Tom's been running a, a Caribbean seed collecting program uh, for the last two years. Uh, and he'll also be overseeing a Caribbean tree seed collecting program in the years to come. Uh, Tom is our, our main partner uh, and networking collaboration individual at Q for all of our Caribbean uh, seed collecting activities. Uh, and so one of the important parts of this project uh, is to get everyone together, allow them to spend time together to get to know one another so that moving forward, uh, it's not just someone at the end of an email, it's actually individual faces that you know. Uh, so building, building these partnerships is really important. Uh, so sitting next to Tom is Mr. Jose Sustachi. Uh, he's the state botanist for Puerto Rico. Um, we've been collaborating with, uh, with Jose for many years now. He's been collecting seed from uh, the critical elements of the flora in Puerto Rico for the last two years. Uh, he's now working on the third year of that project. Uh, he's also been a, a, a great assistance to me for some of the research that I've been doing on threatened species in Puerto Rico, assisting me in the field. Uh, he also manages a, a herbarium in San Juan, uh, and this is one of the key elements of this project, is Sustachi will be providing training for Natasha uh, in the field on how to identify plants, but also how to curate and, and maintain a small herbarium, which is the dream uh, of establishing here in, in the British Virgin Islands. Uh, next is Mr. Omar Monsegur. Uh, he's with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Endangered Species Program in the Caribbean. Uh, Omar and I have been collaborating for many years on threatened plants, uh, in particular Veronia rupicola, which is a species that occurs in southwest Puerto Rico, Vieques, and on the island of Anagata. And the population on Anagata is by far the largest that is remaining in the Puerto Rican bank. Uh, Omar is also responsible for dealing with a number of other uh, threatened species that occur here in BVI and the USVI, uh, and as well as providing uh, training and support to Natasha in how to monitor uh, and restore threatened plants. Uh, he's also being able to, to gather information and speak to colleagues here in BVI about where these plants grow. In many instances, here in BVI is the largest population of many federally listed plants. Uh, so these are things that the U.S. government has, has taken steps to protect legally uh, because their populations have, have gotten to such low numbers in Puerto Rico or the U.S. Virgin Islands. And Omar will speak a little more about that in a few minutes. Uh, next to Omar is Janine Velez. Uh, she is the curator of the herbarium at the University of Puerto Rico Mayaguez campus. Uh, she also um, will be providing training to Natasha, uh, not only on herbarium curation, uh, but one of the major elements is Janine is a, a super user of the Brahms database. Uh, Janine's been on the um, committee for that database project uh, for many years, has provided training um, uh, throughout the region, but also internationally. Uh, and she will be uh, showing Natasha how to use that database as a one-stop shop for all of our botanical data. Uh, so we'll go out and collect specimens, we put the information in the database. We grow plants here in the nursery, we put that information in the database. We use those plants in restoration projects in the national parks, we can track that information in the database. So we'll have everything in, in one place. Uh, it's easy to access, easy to manage, and we can link documents, images, everything to it. Uh, so hopefully, we're building up uh, a really important resource. Uh, the other partner that was mentioned who um, is not here today is, is Mr. Christian Torres Santana. Uh, he's the director of the Arboretum, which is at the foundation for um, Luis Munoz Marin, who was the first governor of uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, their arboretum has specifically been developed with um, threatened plants, native plants in mind. Uh, again, we had the opportunity to tour that facility with Christian when we were in Puerto Rico. Uh, and we will be taking um, steps to ensure that we're able to go back. Uh, Natasha is able to get some more experience there of how those plants are being used in the landscape situation. Because again, one of the important things that we want to move forward with uh, here in the Botanic Garden in particular is showing that native plants can be used to make wonderful native gardens. 
you don't have to grow all exotic plants. You can have native plants that will fill the same role and in many instances can be more attractive and they use less water, they're more adapted to the climate. Uh, it's a win-win situation for everyone. So the project itself, uh, as we're moving forward, we have some, some quite key milestones. Uh, one, of the, one of the big things I've mentioned already is the Brahms database. Uh, so Natasha will be getting training at Kew and also at Mayaguez campus. Um, that database will pull together all the information that we have uh, for the flora here in the British Virgin Islands. Herbarium specimens, observation records, um, and not just specimens held at Kew, but also through the UPR system uh, in Puerto Rico and any information that we've been able to get from other international herbaria like the Smithsonian. We'll also be developing the ex situ collection. Uh, so the plants that we're growing here in the gardens are actually a conservation initiative. Uh, we go out, we collect seed of these species, we put those in secure storage, but we also use those seeds to turn them into plants. And so, just as an example, on the table here, we have a few uh, species of interest. Uh, the one at the, the front in the white pot, uh, this is a federally listed, so U.S. government has federally listed this species. It's called Mitricarpus polycladus. Uh, it is only known in southwest Puerto Rico, um, and we have a, a large population that we've recently rediscovered on Anagata. Uh, so, in the last few months since its rediscovery, there's been an effort to secure plants, live plants, but also make seed collections. And the Park Struffs uh, were able to go back and make a, a rather large collection of this plant. Uh, so we now have those secure. We now need to begin monitoring this population, though, to gather more information about it. Every time we go look, we find a few more plants. Uh, so, obviously, there's a lot more to be learned about this species. Cultivating it is one way to do that. Uh, the next plant back in the green pot, uh, these are cuttings of an extremely rare tree called Erythrina agurzii. Uh, it is a Puerto Rican bank endemic. There's very little known about this species, very few individuals left. And again, uh, this was a discovery uh, just in the last six months here on Tortola. Uh, so we're now monitoring this population. Uh, we've discovered that uh, just during this trip there are some young fruits developing and the Parks Trust staff will monitor those over the coming weeks. Uh, in the black pot we have a, again a Puerto Rican bank endemic. This is Argothamnia stallii. Uh, again this is one that we're trying to learn how to grow because we think it'll make a great ground cover. In the wild it's exactly what it does. It grows underneath the shade of other plants. So in very dry conditions, that's exactly what we need is a species that we can use as a ground cover. And this is a native. Um, not that common of a plant, but it's actually something very important for us to, to be able to get into cultivation for the first time. Uh, the other thing you'll see, that very prickly looking uh, cactus that's laying there, uh, that is the prickly web, as the Anagata school children so fondly named it a few years back. Uh, this is a cactus that um, only grows in a couple of small clumps on Anagata uh, and is currently closely related to a, a species that's in southwest Puerto Rico. Uh, so we have been able to collect a cutting of this. Um, we've got a young fruit that's developing on it. That'll be kept here in the garden to monitor that fruit, hopefully to collect seed from it. Uh, and we've been able to show that we can root these with 100% success. So going forward, we'll, we'll be able to establish um, a large collection. We already have several growing here in the garden. But these are just a few examples of the species that we're, we're getting into the collections here. We're learning how to grow them, and we'll now be putting them on display so that we'll be able to have a, a native plant garden that people can come and see. And then hopefully in the future, there will be native plants that people can actually take home with them uh, from the nursery sales. So through the life of this project, we're going to expand these collections by ensuring that we have representative collections from multiple pop populations. Uh, so one of the big problems we have right now is that most of our collections are from single locations. Uh, this does not capture enough of the genetic diversity. Uh, so again, we'll be targeting new populations of these plants. And then the important part of the training that uh, Natasha and the other Parks Trust staff are receiving 
is actually how to monitor those plants going forward so that we understand are there pest issues, are there problems with them reproducing in the wild, uh, or are they stable and are these healthy populations and all we need to do is ensure that they're protected. The main thing that's going to come out at the end of the project is a collaborative conservation strategy. Uh, so we're going to work together to develop a series of protocols on how to collect material, how to document the material, how to maintain the material, and then how to monitor material. All of those will go together under an umbrella conservation strategy. And we'll begin then using that document, which will be a living document that we modify over time, uh, to identify the most important species in the British Virgin Islands and come up with recovery plans for them. So are they represented in the parks? If not, is there suitable habitat for them? And can we actually get them into the parks through propagation methods? Um, if none of the plants are in parks, we don't have adequate habitat for them, then are there areas that we need to look at for further protection? Uh, and so all of these things coming together for this conservation strategy will hopefully ensure that moving forward, nature's little secret here in the BVI is still around. Uh, because the green economy here depends on these green hills and most of these green hills are actually home to a lot of really rare and important species that we need to conserve uh, to keep the diversity here and to keep the tourists coming to see that diversity. So I would now like to uh, hand over uh, to Mr. Omar Monsagur from the Fish and Wildlife Service uh, who's going to make a few comments about his experience here and his, his hopes for the collaboration going forward. Good morning to everyone. Uh, my name is Omar Monsegur and I work for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in Puerto Rico, uh, specifically for the Caribbean Ecological Service uh, field office. And just as a background, we manage or we have 52 federally listed species threatened or endangered. And so you have an idea that over 60% of the listed species in the U.S. Caribbean are plants. That's a, a real challenge, mainly because we, we face the same challenges across the Caribbean. The number of botanists or trained people to work on plants is very reduced. So that highlights the importance of this collaboration. Uh, Puerto Rico what used to be 99 almost uh, deforested by the 1930s. So we were, we were almost completely deforest, deforested for agriculture. And only less than 1% of the forests are actually pristine or, or uh, relic forests. And that explains the number of, of endangered species in Puerto Rico um, and the U.S. Caribbean. Uh, currently, the, the forest cover in Puerto Rico has increased to over 60%, 60 almost 70%. But that's mostly secondary forests and some of them covered by, by exotics. And that's part of the challenge of, of Puerto Rico. And I know that is the challenge all across the Caribbean. The key steps for, for the recovery of the species and working on the conservation of, of species in, in Puerto Rico is the collaboration. Collaboration with the academia, with like the UPR at Maya West and the Department of Natural Resources in Puerto Rico with Sustache. Uh, that communication and exchange of information on a daily basis, weekly basis and, and going out to the field, that, make that makes the difference. We cannot, at least from my experience in Puerto Rico, we cannot be working in different directions. We have to, to bring together and set priorities and identify what is a priority for the conservation of these species and maximize the investment of human, human resources, financial resources, and also the, the plant resources. Uh, from, from this, uh, uh, collaboration. Uh, we have been working with Q for the past five years now, primarily with Baronia rupicola, which was listed last year as a threatened species by the U.S. government. And we designate critical habitat in Puerto Rico, in, along the southern coast of Puerto Rico, and some parts of Vieques Island. 
And we are going to be, in the next year, developing a recovery plan for that species. And the baseline information and all the scientific information that Martin and the people from, from Managada and the USBR is working on is going to be critical for developing a, a robust and, and a strong uh, recovery plan for the species. Uh, for this week, uh, it's been a really a pleasure to meet the people for, from the, the trust face to face and I know the people that we we need to continue working on and exchanging that, that uh, knowledge. It's been fanta fantastic for me. Went to Anegada and see the habitat there uh, for Baronia is completely different from, from what we have in Puerto Rico. Uh, basically in Puerto Rico what we have are remnants. And now with this picture of, of Anegada we can we can see and foresee what is the best habitat for the species and where we have to reintroduce the species. Also, it's, it was impressive to see the natural populations here, so a species like Santoxilum thomasianum. We have not the, that habitat in Puerto Rico. It's also almost gone. It's basically, the species is basically extinct from mainland Puerto Rico. We have only a few individuals and are almost uh, uh, functionally extinct. So for recovery in these species, we need to continue working together. And there is no reason to, to, con to work a, a, apart. If we have the same uh, priorities and we have the, the same research needs, we can work together and, and continue this collaboration in the future, not only with plants, but also with animals and other uh, species. And thanks to, to, all, to Martin and Tom and all the people from the from the trust for sharing with us this uh, this week. Thanks. So now, uh, Mr. Jose Sustachi is going to say a few words um, about his experience and his plans for our collaboration going forward. Good morning. My name is Jose Sustachi. I am botanist of the Department of Natural Resources of Puerto Rico. The Department of Natural Resources are in the best disposition to work together with the, the trust in the conservation of the uh, in rare and endangered species of BBI. We had the opportunity to visit uh, some of the areas in Anegada, Tortola. Uh, we observing the quality of some of the of the habitat. The problem that some of the species have in these habitats. In Puerto Rico, we have the same problems. All the endangered species have the same problem of the habitat. Some are uh, problem uh, produced by exotic species. We have here exotic species. In Puerto Rico, we have exotic species. But in some areas of the, this island, the quality of the forest is very high. Have to protect this area with more uh, put emphasis basically in uh, legislations. Um, as Martin said before, the Department of Natural Resources has in the best disposition to help in maintaining the quality of the habitat, reproducing reprodu the reproduction of some species, collaborate with uh, Natasha, uh, and maintain the relationship between the island. Thank you. So um, I wanted to share with you uh, a couple of the, the major finds that we've had. Um, we've, we've been able over the last two years to identify several new populations uh, of really rare species, particularly here on Tortola. Uh, and these were plants that we had no idea were either here to begin with or that they were still here. So things that were seen many, many years ago uh, and hadn't been seen since. So through the process of our collaborations here, and in particular the, the dedication of the Parks Trust staff of going out in some really harsh conditions and into areas where there are no trails, uh, there's lots of Christmas bush, lots of spiny things that uh, tear you up. Uh, we've had so many new discoveries. Um, we've reported a number of these. 
Uh, but today what I want to, to share with you is, is probably one of the most important finds that we've had. Uh, yesterday on Sage Mountain, we were able to rediscover a population of a BVI endemic species called Calyptranthes chiroscovii. The species has not been seen on Tortola since 1895. Uh, the only known population was on Gorda Peak. We've been monitoring that uh, population for a number of years. Uh, but yesterday, the group of us out together were able to find uh, this population. It's still there. It's very healthy. Uh, we need to go back and do a lot more surveying, but we do know that the species is still extant. Uh, the other exciting find is a, is a new record for a Virgin Island endemic, and again, one of the federally listed species that Omar and his colleagues work with. So Calyptranthes tomasiana, uh, in the same family, the same genus as the uh, Chiroscovii that I just mentioned, um, has been found here on Tortola for the first time. Never been recorded here before. And so again, this is a, a extremely rare plant and a major find uh, to know that it's here and it's in a protected area. So we have the species in protection. Uh, so we'll begin to develop a, a plan for how we monitor these populations, how we target seed collecting, getting material into the ex situ collections here at the garden. Uh, but again, I think this is a, such a, a great way to highlight the importance of these collaborations of working together, getting out in the field, and having expert advice and assistance. Um, but we're now to the point that that knowledge transfer is, is happening. Um, we actually have Parks Trust staff that are out in the field and they're identifying these rare plants themselves. Um, if they're unsure, they're able to communicate with us using social media even, almost real time in the field. Uh, so we're using technology, we're using the skills and the, the data that's available to us to begin to understand the importance of the parks that you have, but also the remnant pieces of forest that are left around, uh, particularly in some of the crown land plots. So over the life of this new uh, two-year Darwin project, I'm sure there will be many more exciting discoveries. Uh, we'll be able to ex secure many new ex situ collections uh, and hopefully ensure that the heritage and the, the plants of the British Virgin Islands is secured, uh, not only in your parks, but also trying to get those out into the hands of the public so that people begin to understand the importance of what is right behind them, is right around them in the forest. Um, because these are things that occur nowhere else in the world. Uh, and some of the plants that do occur other places are in such a critical state that they have legal protection, that there are, you know, huge amounts of resources going in to try to protect those species in the wild. And here in BVI we have uh, already large populations in good shape. So we just need to ensure that those populations don't decrease, uh, that we don't begin to lose them uh, because that's a slippery slope once we start down it. So I would like to open the floor up for any questions either for myself or any of the team that have been involved in the field activities. I wonder if we can just hear a little bit more about the collaborative conservation plan. Can we think of it as like a pre-legislation? There's a policy to guide what we think the best practices of the next level of legislation should be, or? Well, I'll, I'll chip in from the standpoint of the project. The, the conservation strategy is a document for the National Parks Trust and its partners to use to target conservation efforts. And I could see very much, you know, and I'll default to my Parks Trust colleagues if they want to comment how that relates to legislation, but I see very much that this is a tool that could be used to implement any legislation. Yeah, um, if I could just add to that as well, um, we at the Trust have a very close relationship also with our ministry as well as you know, with other uh, partners within government also responsible for environmental management. Um, the strides that are being made in terms of developing uh, or refining an environmental law that we hope to have be reviewed and um, passed somewhere within the balance of this year. Uh, as well as the opportunity that we have because the Trust Act itself is what, that was back in 1986. Um, you know, it, it's time for review as well. 
um, and that too can be once we get into review, which I hope to do, you know, next year. Um, that can also be then strengthened to be extended to these different discoveries that are being, um, you know, that are turning up almost every trip that um, that the Q makes down here, as well as some things that we find in between of um, the trips. Um, so yes, the potential for you know um, that legislative uh, backbone and, and framework to really you know, take into account what is being found is, is definitely there. We'll be pursued as far as we possibly can. Any other questions? So um, we're actually whisking our Puerto Rican colleagues away um, in the next few minutes to catch a plane. Uh, so they're, um, they're going back after a, a very intensive week of field activity. Uh, yesterday afternoon we were all running on empty. Uh, we've had a, a every day out in the field. Uh, so myself and Colin, uh, sorry, myself and Tom will be staying on uh, for the next couple of days. Uh, working here specifically in the garden, uh, processing material that we've collected, uh, working with Natasha to um, get all the data that we've um, pulled together over the last couple of weeks uh, ready for sending material back to the UK, uh, but also ensuring that new collections we've made are secured here in the nursery. Um, and then Tom will be heading off on Friday. Uh, I'm around until early next week, but I'm actually working on Anagata this weekend, again on the Veronia Rupicola. Uh, we're doing camera trapping uh, and deploying some data loggers so that we can look at temperature and humidity. Uh, so trying to understand where the species grows and why it grows there. Any other comments from the field team, other Parks Trust staff? So, your yeah, ba basically this two-year project is providing the funding for movement between BVI Puerto Rico and BVI Q. Uh, and so the, the training schedule for that is being developed. Um, I think it was mentioned already, Natasha's next trip uh, will be to go and do database training at, at Q in September. Uh, she'll also be working uh, with horticultural specialists there, touring the nurseries, seeing how propagation work is done and how plant collections are maintained uh, in a range of different types of uh, conditions. Uh, from there, there will be further training in Puerto Rico, uh, based at Mayaguez, uh, and then early in the new year, uh, we'll be looking to do more monitoring, field identification training, uh, and whether that will be here or in, in Puerto Rico, we're still trying to look at what's the most effective uh, and is going to get the most impact for the broadest group of people. But over the next two years, yes, there will be a, a lot of movement. So hopefully you'll see this suite of people several times over the next two years. I'm also hoping once the information I gather here gets to the university that more uh, professors over there will be interested in coming here and doing some other studies and collaborations. Excellent. If I can offer just one final comment. I mean, ultimately, we, we're so grateful that Natasha has you know, um, actually gone to school to study this, and we do recognize that uh, within our uh, secondary um, level population, there is a hazard to guess. Uh, a growing interest in things uh, botanical, um, at least within our high school. We have a number of um, persons, um, late high school, early college, who even come here to volunteer their time because they are interested in supporting the work of the garden and they see it as something that they are actually actively considering for careers themselves. So what I would also like to see, this is a kind of secondary or tertiary output of all of this collaboration, is 
know, additional opportunities for young people in terms of you know, thinking about their future to really give serious consideration to not necessarily just working for the trust, but then also to you know, buy in and consider the universities and the institutions that are in Puerto Rico and even at Q and you know, just continue to develop that local capacity, growing the local people population to help manage the plants, which ultimately is one of the outputs of this particular project anyway. You know, we want to build the capacity, not just of our local agency that's responsible now, but you know, to make sure that it actually extends into 5, 10 years, 15 years down in the future. So, hopefully the future is looking brighter, not just for our people, but our plants as well. Because of All right. Thank you very much for coming, and uh, hopefully we'll have some more great finds over the next few months, and you'll be hearing more about the project uh, when Natasha comes back from her experience at Q.